Welcome to part two of my Chicago preparation video diary series that I'm making. So if you're not quite sure what this is about, um, I'm in the process of prepping for a run of the musical Chicago and because I've done the show before I thought I'd do something a bit different with this one and do a little bit of a video diary of what I go through when I'm prepping for a show. Uh, and I've already done one so one video so you may want to check that out if you're interested uh if not well you can just watch this one i guess uh so because it's been a few weeks since the last recording uh i've written myself a little list of things that i can talk about to keep me on track so uh first there's been four band rehearsals since my last recording so um the most recent one of that was just on friday just gone so it's currently sunday uh, so about two days ago um, and during those band rehearsals what we've been covering is just going through the music as a band and as individuals just checking to make sure everything's lining up uh, making sure that the trumpet charts and the trombone charts and the drum charts and the piano charts and everything all line up that there's no errors in the charts uh, all of the individual members are checking the tech Techniques that they need. Do they need mutes? Do they need you know extra instrumentation? Um, is the notation correct? You know, is it written up the octave or down the octave? Things like that. Uh, and there's been discussions about what techniques each instrumentalist should be using, or requests for them to use particular techniques. Things like that. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of errors uh, in playing uh, while we fumble through and figure out what we need. Uh, for example, I might be playing one part and then suddenly realize, oh, I was meant to change to brushes a couple of bars ago. Better go on back and try that again, so we'll run it again. Things like that. So it's just making sure that the music as a whole will work as far as the band is concerned. There's been no cast members there so far. All right. Um, so that, that's the band rehearsals. That, they're happening in a local high school. Um, where the band are getting together. There's been a couple of rehearsals where some band members haven't been able to make it due to other commitments. Uh, there are several other musicals going on in the community at this time, so some of them are doubled, some of the musicians are doubled up. Uh, some of them are just going on holiday or something, so they can't make it. So, for whatever reason, they haven't been able to make it. Uh, all right, then the other main thing I've been dealing with other than just going through the music and making sure that things work, is I've actually had to make some multi-mallets. Now, if you don't know what a multi-mallet is, it's like two drumsticks in one. So one of the problems with Chicago, in particular, is that you have to change from playing drum kit to glockenspiel very quickly. There's no real time to change from one to the other. You don't get like a four bar break and then get to play the glockenspiel. You've just got to be able to go straight to playing. To play with drumsticks and then put the drumsticks down and then pick up a set of glockenspiel mounts, play the glockenspiel mounts, and then put the glockenspiel mounts down again and then pick up the drumsticks and start playing again on the drum kit is just really, really awkward and, you know, clumsy. Uh, I was dropping sticks, I was forgetting where I was, I was concentrating so much on picking them up that I'd forget where I was, things like that. So I made myself a set of multi mallets. So this is homemade, okay? You, you can buy similar things, um, but not in the sizes and designs that I like. So this is an AJ6 drumstick, the drumstick size I like, and I've made a glockenspiel mallet to fit into the end of it. So I've got a hard rubber bead um, and a piece of dowel, and I've drilled a hole in the drumstick that comes down to about there, okay? It's about, I don't know, two inches American, okay? say five centimeters 
uh, if you use metric, and I've just drilled that in there and then super glued it all together. And I've got both of them, okay? Obviously I need a pair. So uh, I've made two of these in case I drop a pair, okay? I can grab another pair uh, while I'm rehearsing or while I'm doing the show. So I've made those. And what allowed me to make those was I had to buy that. And this is a, uh, a baby drill press. So I've, I've been looking at getting a proper big drill press uh, for a long time, but I really can't justify it. So I did find out that you can get these little conversion uh, systems, if you want to call it that, units, where you put a regular drill into it and you can bolt it to a table and then you can drill um, and use it as a drill press. It's not perfect, it's not as good as a proper drill press, but it does the job for me and uh, gives me what I need. Um, ultimately, yes, I would love to have like a $500, $1,000 drill press sitting in my shed, but that is never gonna happen. So um, this will do the job. I picked this up for $50 Australian from a place called JCar, which is a shop that specializes in like electronics and hobby stuff. So if you're into like remote control cars or you're into building circuit boards and things like that, uh, they also stock a whole heap of other stuff. but. Um, they had these sitting on the shelf, and I uh, went down, had a look at it, and uh, figured out that it would probably do the job. I'd do a little bit of experimentation with it. Um, I did end up wasting two pairs of old drumsticks, just experimenting with how to position it all and get it all to work. Uh, but it did the job, so I'm happy with that. Um, I can use that for other projects as well. Uh, and if I need to make any other types of multi mounts, I now can. Um, now. The other thing about multi mallets I've needed to worry about is towards the end of the show, there's a song called Hot Honey Rag, and we have to segue from one song directly into Hot Honey Rag. Uh, there's no time to stop. If you don't know what segue means, it just needs to go straight into it. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure that in the last production that we did, it was an applause segue. So applause segue meaning that you know, the audience are clapping, yay, and then we start the song. So you might get five seconds, 10 seconds worth of clapping. That gives me just, that would have given me just enough time to put my sticks down, pick up the next set of sticks, and then move on with the song. Uh, with this production, they've just decided to direct segue it. So it's literally a, just a joined up piece of music. Uh, they're directly connected. Uh, so I don't have any time to swap from brushes, which is what the first song is, into Hot Honey Rag, which it uses sticks. Um, and at rehearsal, I came undone with that. I was trying to figure out, how okay, I'm gonna put these down and then pick up the sticks and how am I gonna do that? And the musical director's like, no, you need to be able to just change. And I'm like, I, I got no idea how I'm gonna do that. So uh, after some thinking, I kind of realized, hang on a second, in my stick bag, I do have these. And these are another type of multi mallet drum brush on one end and a drumstick on the other. So what I can do is play the song before Hot Honey Rag. Sorry, I can't remember what the song is called off the top of my head. Um, so I play, play that song with brushes and then when I need to segue into Hot Honey Rag, I just flip the sticks over and do play with the sticks. Um, now, the other problem I've got with that particular song is that I've also got a page turn as well. And if you saw the last video, you will know that I don't just turn pages like in a book. I've actually got to grab the sheet of music off the music stand and stick it on the floor, which is a bit of an awkward thing to do when you're trying to play. And I realized that the um, floor tom part, which is the introduction to Hot Honey Rag, can be played simply one-handed. So I was playing it double-handed, and then I realized oh, that's not gonna work. I need to change the page. But the rhythm is simple enough that I can play it with one hand with the right hand, while reaching up and turning the page.
Um, now, the other thing is I haven't actually been using real drumsticks at rehearsals. Um, I've been using these at rehearsals, which are um, Promark Cool Rods, which are something I like to use for the first four or five band rehearsals in particular because they let the drums be lower in volume, they dull the tone down a bit and they let the band focus on their harmonies. So to make sure that the, all the woodwinds and you know uh, brass instruments are all in harmony uh, and I'm not just obliterating all the frequencies by accident uh, by playing a bit too loud. So for the first few rehearsals, I probably four, five, maybe six, I will sit very much back in the mix. I'll try to keep it you know, very restrained um, and be very much a background instrument. That way everybody else can worry about, you know, their harmonies and key changes and, you know, uh, the woodwinds can worry about their techniques and their vibrato and all that sort of stuff that, you know, might not get heard. Uh, it means that the other band members can hear each other properly. Um, and, you know, if there's a technique that both members need to be able to play, they can hear each other playing those techniques because one member might not realize and then they hear the other member doing it oh that's right i've got to do this so my job at the first few rehearsals i believe is just to stay out of the way practice my part but stay out of the way so i use these um and because i'm using those when need brushes i use a set of big firth um i think they're heritage brushes um the ones with the sort of purpley blue rubber handle which i quite like um and this is where I got into trouble changing into Hot Honey Rag because I came off the back of one song using brushes and then I suddenly had to change to these and I was like, ah, oh, how am I going to do that? And then I realised I can do it with that. Now we're starting to get to a point with the band now where I can start probably using sticks. Um, I'm using a mixture of a school drum kit at the school and my, some of my own percussion equipment that I'm taking that the school simply doesn't have. Uh, which means loading in and packing up. And it's not just a simple matter of turn up, use the school drum kit and go home, which you can do in some cases if you're lucky enough and you're practicing at a high school or something and there's a drum kit there. Sometimes you're lucky enough just to be able to walk in, use the drum kit and leave. Uh, but not for this show. I've got to take a lot of my own stuff. Uh, and I haven't taken everything yet. So I haven't taken the glock and spiel. I haven't taken the sound effects unit things like that um, and there's certain things I've taken depending on what we're planning on rehearsing okay so that's kind of covers the multi mallet things and changing from six to brushes sound effects okay uh, as you're probably aware with Chicago uh, the drummer is responsible for a lot of sound effects in the show particularly during the courtroom scene so I've had to mess around a lot with my Yamaha multi 12 unit and figure out what sound effects um, are needed and which ones I can put in and things like that and I've loaded them up taken them to a rehearsal and I've even had the musical director come around here and have a look at what I'm doing uh, and there's been some sound effects that they've just gone uh, no that sucks we don't like the sound of that please use something else and that's fine that's part of the process so um, the MD has sent me uh, a sound effect and then decide and then the musical director and the director for the show decided that they didn't want to go down the pre-recorded gunshot sound effect, which is what the other production did. And my personal opinion is that's the way I think the show should go, but I'm not in charge of it. I just get told, do a gunshot sound effect so I've got to do that. Now the original production is obviously if you know the show you rim shot on the snare drum. We find an offender. You should see what's going on out there. There was this divorce action and this bang shot her husband, his mother and the defense attorney. Uh, that's something that I've had to go back to doing. And in some ways it is actually a lot easier because I'm not looking for a drum pad to hit or anything like that. I don't have to do any programming with it. I just hit the snare drum and bang, obviously you get the gunshot sound effect. Um, so yeah, there's been some back and forth about that. I'm uh, gonna have to experiment a little bit with that uh, as the weeks go on. Um, now, the other thing is that we've been discussing a platform for the band is this show is going to be a little different 
at the back of the stage there's going to be a, about a nine foot riser uh, like scaffold that the band is going to be sitting on um, the audience will see us but not super clearly so we're kind of up there kind of in almost like a gallery uh, and you'll see shadows moving around up there as we play uh, but we'll kind of be a little bit out of sight um, now that's being finalised and there are some concerns from the band, including myself, about the idea, well, it's a scaffold, what, and if nine feet off the ground, what happens if somebody accidentally drops a trumpet mute or accidentally kicks the violin stand and it falls off, the, you know, is it going to fall down nine feet onto the stage and possibly hit, a, hit an actor or something? So uh, there's been back and forth with the production team about that. They're addressing that, they're taking this uh, safety part very seriously. Um, and obviously we've got to figure out how we're going to fit into that space. Apparently the band space is somewhere around 8 feet wide by about 30 feet long. So I'm told. <laughs> um, so we've got to figure out how we're going to fit everything into that space. Uh, I've worked with this production company before and they did a very similar thing with a production of Grease that they did uh, where I was helping out backstage. So I've seen what the trying to do before and it does work so uh, there's a nice set of stairs go up the scaffold is a professionally built scaffold they get professionals in to build this big thing um, so yeah there's some concerns from the band members about things falling off of it um, how stable it's going to be all that sort of thing which will be fine i've seen it before so it's not a big problem um, but that's something that's been going on uh, i've been doing some score editing um, so I've been going through and liquid papering out some notes and liquid papering in some other notes. Um, you know, there's some songs that, you know, the acceleration happens a little bit sooner or later than it's marked on the chart, so I have to move that. Uh, there's some parts of the book that I'm not a real big fan of. Uh, like there's like two bars of just this crazy woodblock thing that really to me serves no purpose. It's not linked to a cast member, it doesn't do any musical, it's not linked to a musical theme, it's, there's really no point to it, it's just the drummer just went crazy playing on woodblocks for two bars, and it's like, okay, I've listened to other versions of the production and some drummers play it and some drummers don't, so it's not that important, so I've just decided to drop it, I've just said, no, I'm just going to continue on with the rhythmic theme that I'm already playing, there's no need for me to do this crazy woodblock triangle thing that needs to happen while it's written in the book. So little things like that. Um, so I'm um, streamlining the charts, I guess is the best way to put it. All right, uh, another big concern for me is that because we're on the big platform, um, I'm not gonna be able to see the actors directly for doing the circus uh, courtroom scene thing. So I'm gonna need to be able to have a monitor or a TV monitor to be able to see the stage. Now I've got a little uh, platform for, to put a monitor on. I've got a monitor uh, and I've got a little black and white camera uh, but we weren't quite sure whether we'd be able to actually see everything. So I set up this little thing in the backyard to sort of see what the camera would can pick up. So pick up the uh, the angles of the camera. It's right, okay, will it pick up the whole stage or will it only pick up this small section and how would I have to position it? And think that. So I've had to do some experimentation like that. Of all things, out in my backyard. Um, I'll put a little bit of put a little clip in of that because I did some uh, filming with my phone. Um, you won't get to see the whole setup, but you'll get to see what I kind of had to do to go through. Things I had to go through. Okay, so the scaffold that the band is going to be on is apparently nine feet high. So I measured a few things, and as it turns out, the shade sail pole in my backyard is exactly nine feet high, um, which I had no idea of until I'd just tried measuring it. Uh, typically the shade sail pole connects from here uh, and there's a shade sail that's meant to connect up to the shed and this whole section is meant to have a shade sail over it but we've never used it so it's just a pole in the backyard. Um, so what I'm going to do is connect a camera up on top here okay which is just a clamp out of the shed and a drum clamp with a microphone clip in it uh, and that is at exactly nine feet 
And what that's going to do is we're going to point the camera into the backyard over here, okay? And we're going to imitate the stage area just to sort of see what the field of view on the camera is. So my theory is, if I come over here, excuse the long grass, I've got to mow the lawn, and we look back, so that's where the camera will be. This will kind of be the front of the stage. It's about how big the stage is. Um, we're a little bit short of the width, but I should be able to see everything. And then if I walk over, this would be walking across the front of the stage, essentially. And we'd probably get to about the side of the stage here. Anything that's this far off to the side is probably not worth being seen. We're probably getting into the wings here. Um, so, and probably center stage would probably be roughly about here. So, if my camera can pick that up, um, I should be able to see everything that's happening on stage. Awesome. These are the little things that you've got to try and test out. So, to make this work though, I've got to get a RCA cable that's about three meters long. And what I'm going to do is set up the TV monitor down here just to see what I can see of the backyard. And yeah, we'll do some experiments and see if I can get a stage monitor working. All right. Um, all right, so that's the TV monitor thing. Uh, now, the other one that happened was I have not just gone to the band rehearsals and work on the band music, but I've also had to go to a cast rehearsal as well. Or I've been requested to go to a cast rehearsal. So uh, the cast are rehearsing at the same high school on a different night, and they're also rehearsing at like a storage facility near the local airport. Uh, where they've got their sets and everything set up. Uh, and they, they can work with those using props and you know, doing what they call blocking and moving around and things like that. So, um, yeah, so I, I was asked to go and um, work with the cast on the courtroom scene because obviously the drummer needs to supply the sound effects and the cast weren't fully sure about what sound effects were going to be used, where they were going to happen, all that sort of thing. And a few interesting things happened. Um, the cast are still working through their parts, so some of them are still reading off of script. Um, you know, a lot of them are still figuring out where to stand and where to walk, and you know, um, you know they're, they're still learning their parts. So, and that's to be expected. Um, now, the interesting thing that happened was, obviously, if you know the show, I've got to provide the gunshots for when Roxy uh, explains how she shot um, uh, Fred Casely. So uh, I was expecting the movement to be, and then I shot him. Bang, bang, bang. Okay, with the idea of that she fires the gun and the gun kicks back. But that's not what she did. She went bang, bang, bang. So the uh, the gunshot sound effect is on the extension out, not on the pullback. So um, so we were trying to do this part and she's looking at me and I'm looking at her <laughs> we're trying to figure this thing out of like, what, you, you know, how's this gonna work? So eventually somebody mentioned, oh, by the way, it's meant to be bang, not bang, okay? So there's no recoil per se, if you wanna think of that. So we were thinking of it slightly differently, and this is the type of stuff that has to be panel beaded out. It's gotta be sorted out, um, discussed, all that sort of stuff. Um, another part is where Roxy goes up and taps somebody on the shoulder, I can't remember who it is. Um, I think it's Fred Casely again. She walks up and taps Fred Casely on the shoulder. Uh, and if it's a little like this, it, you can't see it. Uh, so it needs to be a bigger motion. Uh, and yeah, I was like, oh, has she done it yet? Am I? <laughs> so I couldn't see properly and things like that. So we've got to fix all those things up. Um, you know, uh, things like Fred Casely doing up his zipper, you know, and using the ratchet. Um, you know, uh, one big thing that they've decided to add to my drum score is the judge's gavel. So during the uh, courtroom scene, there is um, a part where one of the lawyers says objection and the judge goes um, sustained and then hits with the gavel. And, 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 when you 
asked him to, did he go away? I object. The counsel is leading the witness. Sustain. I'll rephrase the question. Um, they want that gavel sound effect coming from me, not from the stage, because they don't want to have to lug a prop on and then bring it off again. Uh, and things like that. Plus, it'll come through clearer if it's under the microphones and all that sort of stuff. So they want me to do it. The thing is, it's not on my drum score because it's actually meant to come from the stage originally. So because I've handed it to me, I've had to make markings and okay, they want that there. And so there's three initial judges gavel hits early on in the very in the very beginning of the courtroom scene. Then there's another one later on. And then they want another one on the very end. There's a kind of like it's it's kind of like yeah, um, the very end of the song. They want a judges gavel just to kind of you know, it's almost like dismiss court you know the case is dismissed bang things like that um so i've got a couple of those uh they also want a couple of extra clanks put in um there's some metallic clanking sounds which if you saw the last video i'm just using a metal bar for that at the moment uh, so i've got to be able to try, try to write this stuff into the score and make it work um and relearn the part because i'm used to hitting a hi-hat and a snare drum or something at that point and now I've suddenly got to hit a metal bar or a wood block or something, you know, so they've just changed it. Um, a little bit, not much, uh, just enough to be annoying. Um, uh, so that's some of the stuff that I've been doing. Uh, one last thing I had to do was I did a modification to my music stand for rehearsals only. So normally I have a second music stand that I take to rehearsals because I use the big charts and I use the music stand that folds out. And the problem I've always had with it is that it, the pole is centered uh, in amongst the, I guess you could say the plate, the, the stand that holds the music part. Um, and it's always been a pain because I, I stick it right next to the bass drum and it shifts the music way off to the side, uh, to the left. So I've actually put the pole towards the left and now it opens up and it opens up more this way on the right hand so it hangs over the bass drum more. Uh, the only problem with that is now the music stand wants to fall over because all the weight is on the right hand side. So now I've got to use weight bags to hold the whole thing up and uh, stable. So that's another thing that we'll take to rehearsal as well. Uh, there is actually a cast rehearsal going on at the moment as I talk because uh, it's Sunday. Um, that's going on over at the high school. I wasn't sure if I should go to that or not, uh, but I'll probably go to a few more cast rehearsals as the weeks go on, uh, just so as I can get an idea of what's happening and how it's going to work. So I'll be doing two rehearsals a week, probably uh, starting in the next week or so. Some of the band members are lucky, they can just turn up to the band rehearsal play, they didn't go home. Um, and some of them have played the show before, so they're pretty familiar with it. So, um, all right, I think that's about it for uh, part two. All right. Hopefully this helps. Have fun.